All right. Meanwhile, talking about wealth, Twitter shares surged 22% on Tuesday after Tesla CEO Elon Musk uh, reportedly dropped his legal challenge and offered to buy Twitter for his original $44 billion price tag. Joining us right now is Competitive Enterprise Institute Director of Center for Technology and Innovation, Jessica Malusian. Jessica, great to see you. What's your reaction? The roller coaster continues. Elon Musk never disappoints, right? We can't talk about much else. Uh, although, uh, Tom Brady's giving us a, a nice off ramp, but <laughs> here we are back with Twitter. Um, I, I think that things weren't going his way in court. Um, I think his lawyers probably read him the writing on the wall, and he obviously he's sort of reconsidered, and I think that's probably really smart. I don't think that uh, the court in Delaware was going to let him out of this, so we're going to go forward and see what he does with Twitter. Yeah, Dagan, he's still talking about 5420 on the price tag. The Supreme Court announcing it's going to take up a case which challenges the technology company's immunity under Section 230. I want to get your take on that, Dagan. But what, what, what about that? Uh, do you think that has anything uh, comes into play with this? I mean, were, it, were you surprised? It, it might. One thing that I noticed um, anecdotally on Twitter, as soon as this deal, um, this was announced yesterday, I know that people's follower counts started mm -hmm. falling. Uh, here we so go. So they started right. cleaning, but they're trying to clean up the bots potentially. Like if this deal is going to get done, then you have to like come clean about the number of bot accounts that are out there. And it wasn't, it wasn't just mine. It was uh, many people had like kind yeah. of a decline in I wish in, they would just stop messing with the with the accounts, you know? I mean, just stop. Why do we see these huge moves? Because they're fake. Yeah. They're fake accounts. Because they have so many bots. I mean, that right. was Musk's point. This thing is filled with exactly. bots, and you just saw it last night. Okay. Jessica, your thoughts? Yeah, I think that that's right. If he's trying to make Twitter profitable, and he's going to do that in the same advertising mode that it's been working on, then he's got to clean up some of that mess, right? Advertisers aren't going to pay to have their ads in front of things that aren't real. Those aren't real eyeballs. Um, but he has talked about going to a subscription model, which I think would be an interesting try. And then the advertising becomes less important. And also, it might allow him to sort of adjust the levers and keep more content up that way. Um, if you're subscribing, you're probably a lot less picky about those things than advertisers are. They tend to be a little more uh, concerned about those factors. So I think that potentially Twitter could really be improved in a lot of ways. I mean, he's he's the guy who's done it other places. So yeah. it'll be really fun to watch. Yeah, but I mean, people want to see some accountability from, from big tech. And I want to get your take about Section 230. This 1996 law shields Internet companies from lawsuits related to user content, Jessica, and now the Supreme Court is taking it on. How big is this, and do you think uh, we see some serious change here? Well, we certainly could potentially. So what's important to remember about Section 230 is that it protects those Internet platforms in keeping more things up. Um, and these cases, actually, that are in front of the Supreme Court are about getting those platforms in trouble for not taking enough down. So the charge is that their algorithms recommended content that was harmful and led to actual real-world harms. So if the Supreme Court weighs in and narrows the protections of Section 230 for these platforms, these platforms would be incentivized to take more content down. So I think that's important to remember mm. that if the court takes action, this will not be a victory for conservatives worried about keeping more content up, right? That's the rub with Section 230. The left and the right hates it, but they hate it for opposite reasons. Yeah, the I left know, but wants I mean, more taken down, so, and, so, and this would do that. So these companies can't be stopped then, Joe Concha. I mean, you know, look, they, they, they censor everything they want. Look at the other day, YouTube censored Georgia Maloney in Italy, and then they said, oh, it was a mistake to censor her victory mm -hmm. speech. I it's mean, amazing. it just never stops. Right. The mistakes only go in one direction. Yeah, right. right. Obviously, yes, exactly before the 2020 right. election, censoring accounts who simply shared that New York Post story on Hunter Biden. Jessica, my question is, and this is something that you can't answer definitively, you talked about Elon Musk being unpredictable. Somebody else who's equally as unpredictable is the former president and Donald Trump. Do you think he returns to Twitter under an Elon on Musk leadership, where he has his own social media outlet in terms of uh, true social, but will Donald Trump return to perhaps his favorite place in the world? Yeah, it would be hard to resist, you would think. Um, I think that Elon's very open to having him back. I mean, like you said, I can't say for sure, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was welcomed back on, whether he bites at that or sticks to true social. I don't know. That's, you know, he's, he's a better marketing uh, 
expert than I am about what makes sense for him. But, you know, and I will say, there's no reason he couldn't be on both. Um, that's the thing about these sites. You know, you don't have to be on just one, as we all know. I think the average person uses six. So um, oh, wow. maybe we'll see him back on both platforms. I think it's giving them too much credit. I mean, I, I really, I, I don't know. Uh, meanwhile, the administration claims it's nearing a security deal with TikTok to regulate the Chinese-owned social media app. The Journal is uh, reporting that it's warning this deal may pose a liability for Biden as talks have taken on added urgency with a potential red wave in November. Jessica, where does this go? Well, the, the proposal that's being negotiated right now hasn't been made public, but we do know a few things about it. And what it centers around are a couple points, one of which is not letting Chinese employees of TikTok have access to U U.S. consumer data on the app. So it, it's about moving all of that stuff over to the U.S. Um, Oracle might be involved with overseeing some of it. And there's a panel of security experts that would report to the U.S. government about any propaganda or misinformation that might be pushed through the Chinese government on the app. So we'll see if they can get that done. Ideally, I suppose, it before the election, that's where a lot of these concerns come from. Um, I'm not sure they'll be able to get it done that quickly. It's all complicated. Right, Jessica, thanks very much for weighing in on all of that. Good to see you, Jessica Malusian, this morning on All Things Tech.